Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good afternoon, everybody. This is Professor Vikas Medi. A topic for <coughs> discussion is pharmacology of adrenaline and other sympathomimetics. What I request to you is if you can read detail of ANS, autonomic nervous system, drug acting on ANS. As you know that it maintain a balance. One side, it is sympathetic system. Another side, there is a parasitic system. So, what I am going to talk about today is sympathomimetics. So, if you read in great detail, it will be very easy to understand other system also. Now, <clears throat> if you look at adrenaline-like drug, what you call it sympathomimetics. This drug partially or completely mimics action of epinephrine. Draw it is called adrenergic system. Ideally, it should have been called epinephrine or maybe you can call it norepinephrine because majority of cases the norepinephrine it is released in response to any stimuli. Suddenly, you see something you fall, you know, you get a shock. You can see that your hairs become, you know, straight. That is the release of adrenaline. You get the response. So once this neurotransmitter then activate adrenoreceptors in postsynaptic or presynaptic site, you get a pharmacological action. And all this is released. You call it adrenergic agonist. So, one way sympathomimetic, whatever it is released, adrenaline, noradrenaline, it act on alpha receptors. You have various alpha receptors, then beta receptors, beta 1, beta 2, or you can go on beta 4, 5. Similarly, for parasympathomimetic, you have muscarinic receptors or nicotinic receptors. So, you get all the actions because of this agent it bind to the receptors and you get an effect. <laughs> now, <clears throat> how it is been produced in the body? Endogenous. You can see we have phenylalamine and this phenylalamine it is converted with phenylalamine hydroxylase then to tyrosine hydroxylase ultimately it forms the dopa or dopamine. And Action of dopamine beta hydroxylase it converted it to adrenaline by N methyl transference. So, you get adrenaline act on alpha, it act on beta. In various system, we get an effect of adrenaline. Now, if you see this hydroxylation of tyrosine by tyrosine hydroxylase, and generally, what you can say that regarding that, it is called red limiting biosynthesis. Typically, you might have heard it is catecholamine because there is catechol, catecholamines, catechol ring is present here. So, this red limiting enzyme, it is activated following the stimulation of sympathetic nerve to adrenal medulla. So, it is the biggest ganglia in the body adrenal medulla. Following the stimulation, there is excessive release of adrenaline and noradrenaline occurs. Typically, you might have seen the patient with pheochromocytoma where there is adrenal medullal tumor is there and because of release, there is hypertensive crisis that develop. So, let us classify sympathomimetic drugs. 
if you look at chemical part, like I just said that it has typically called catacol. So, we call it catacolamines. So, there are some drugs belongs to catacolamines and rest of are non catacolamines. Now, you can also divide through mode of action. Some of these catacolamines sympathomimetic act on directly, some are indirectly acting or some are mixed, it has both dual action. So, if you look at the catacolamine, this is the catacol mode nucleus is there. It is here chemical structure like core structure catacol or there is a amide group is there with the catacolamine two chemical structure catacol nucleus with amide group is there and that is why it called catacolamine. So, moment you can say catacolamine you can name some drug like dopamine, noradrenaline, adrenaline and you can have a comparative looking at the figures like catacol ring is there, amide group is there, but in case of noradrenaline catacol ring with amide group with hydroxyl ring. Similarly, in adrenaline if you see it has catacol ring or it has a hydroxyl and this group is there. So, you can have a competitive analysis of chemically how it different from dopamine from noradrenaline and when you see the structure of adrenaline. Now, I already said the word some are released endogenously, some are we are giving exogenously. What are the catacolamine it release endogenously? One is adrenaline or another name of adrenaline is epinephrine. Then you call it noradrenaline or norepinephrine and dopamine. These are endogenously released catecholamine. Exogenous you can remember like isoprotonolol. There is another name of isoprotonolol is isoprenaline. It is a very potent selective beta 1 receptor. I will discuss with in detail with isoprenaline. Then we have exogenous one is dobutamine. There is one more drug is phenodolopam is also exogenous catecholamine. So, you can remember in endogenous catecholamine or you can remember exogenous catecholamine. <coughs> now, it is very important to when you look at the chemical structure. So, basically any compound you look you try to establish structure activity relationship why dobutamine or dopamine work, work like this, why noradrenaline work like this or adrenaline, you have seen the chemical structure and there is a variation. Now, if you look at the sympathomimetic like phenyl element which is a parent moiety, it has a hydroxyl ring at 3 to 4 position of benzene, you typically call catecholamine, this is a phenyl element and this substitution is made on this benzene ring with terminal amide group and alpha 1 beta, alpha beta carbon in amine chain. Now, this chemical structure will determine typically some are more affinity to the receptor. Receptor means sympathomimetic it is going to bind to either alpha or beta receptor depending on the drug and also it varies pharmacokinetically looking at the chemical structure and you also see bioavailability of the molecule. <coughs> so, there are so many factors is depend, one is receptor affinity, second is pharmacokinetic profile and third is bioavailability. So, this is going to affect the pharmacological efficacy and also safety profile. Now, if you see substitution of benzene nucleus like drugs having hydroxyl group particularly at 3 and 4 position on benzene ring typically you can see the catecholamine. So, there is a maximal you know affinity to alpha and beta activity. In absence of this two group 
it actually reduce the potency on receptor binding. Like for example, if we take an example of phenylephrine, compared to epinephrine, it is less potent. So, these are some of the example you can remember. Now, what happened in presence of hydroxyl group or when it is inactivated by catechol O methyl transferase? In absence of one of this both hydroxyl group in phenyl ring, what happened? It increased the bioavailability rate, particularly those drug which is given orally. And along with increased bioavailability, it is also causes increased duration of action. And it also penetrates into CNS and there is CNS action. You can take an example of some of the drug like ephedrine or amphetamine. Many of the CNS situation it is used like ADHD, ephedrine is used in various conditions. So, these are some of the example that how hydroxyl group increase bioavailability, increase duration of action and at the same time it cross CNS and you get an effect. So, we can use for certain CNS condition. Substitution of alpha carbon that means, it block the oxidation of mau and it prolong the action of such drug particularly non catecholamine. Mau is monoamine oxidase. So, you can have enhanced ability to displace catecholamine from storage site particularly non adrenergic site like indirectly acting sympathomimetic. You can take a also example of amphetamine in this situation. Now, epinephrine it act on alpha and beta receptors. You can have subtype of alpha, alpha 1, alpha 2 or alpha 1 D like also C or beta 1, beta 2, beta 3, beta 4, beta 5. So, basically when you act a stimulatory oxygen alpha 1, what do you get that effect? It is typically a vasoconstrictor. If you see the vessels acting on alpha 1 receptors, you have a vasoconstriction and at the same time alpha 1 activity, it is also cause a cardiac stimulant action with epinephrine. So, when you look at you know cardiovascular system by stimulating alpha 1 receptors or there is a rise of BP because it also causes stimulation of beta 1 receptor. So, there is increased intraventricular contraction you call it positive inotropic, conotropic, lucidotropic or desmotropic effect or you can also increase the diastolic because it is acting on alpha 1 receptors and beta 2 receptors. So, typically you get a biophasic response. I will talk about detail about del spasometers. So, in lower dose you get a vasodilatory action because it act on beta 1 receptor, beta 2 receptors. So, there is a vasodilatation, but in higher dose it act as a stimulatory to alpha 1 receptors. So, you have a vasoconstrictor effect. So, these are dose response you have to remember. Now, look at the heart rate. It has a direct effect. Moment you give adrenaline there is an increased heart rate, there is an increased heart rate because why? it stimulate particularly beta 1 receptor. There is a relaxation of myocardium also and that is what effect on beta 1, it give all stimulatory action as I said chronotomic effect, chronotropic effect, desmotropic effect, lucidotropic. So, these are the effect you get with the heart rate. Now, what happened in vasomotor reversal by Dales? Dale was a scientist from Cambridge, basic scientist. He demonstrated this phenomenon with adrenaline. If you put IV injection of adrenaline, normally what response you get? There is an increased blood pressure and this increased blood pressure is because of alpha 1 action. Followed by, there is a prolonged fall because as I already said 
because of beta 2 actions there is a vasodilatation. So, if it is given after administering alpha blockers you can see only fall of blood pressure will be seen. You block the alpha 1 receptors you can see only fall of blood pressure. So, this has been described by Dell that on giving beta blockers there is a rise of BP. So, this is typically called vasomotor reversal described by Dell. Now, what happened in respiratory tract? Respiratory tract predominantly beta 2 receptors. If you stimulate beta 2 receptors, you get typically bronchodilatation. That means, beta 2 action causes smooth muscle relaxation. What happened in GIT, smooth muscle in GIT? It relaxed, beta 2 action is relaxed. Sphincter is contracted because of alpha actions. But you have, you know, variety of action. If you see action of this agent in non pregnant uterus or pregnant uterus, and this is because of expression of receptor is different in pregnant uterus. Typically, in pregnant uterus, it inhibits the tone and contraction and it is because of beta 2 action. If you stimulate beta 2, it get relaxation. So, you have a selective beta 2 agonist. It has been practiced like retrodrine or you can also use tarbutalin in order to delay the premature labor. So, we have a drug, it is acting as a uterine relaxant. You call it tocolytic effect. In urinary bladders, we also use Deuteracial muscle relax by beta 2 action. Typically, patient with benign prosthetic hyperplasia and we have alpha 1 agonist, we give the treatment because in the trigon area, it is constricted by alpha 1 receptors. So, you give alpha 1 blockers in order to have a beneficial effect. Now, what happened in CNS effect? Though there is no profound CNF effect because most of the drug do not cross the blood band barrier. Of course, some of this sympathomimetic it is used, I will be discussing in later. Look at the metabolic effect because it inhibits the release of insulin through alpha 2 receptor action. It also effect on gluconeogenesis through beta 2 receptor and it also have effect on glucagon because of beta 2 action on alpha cell of pancreatic islet. So, it has a metabolic effect acting to various receptor like alpha 2 receptor, beta 2 receptors and also it mediate glucagon release. Now, it is very important to look at the pharmacokinetic because it is most of the drug like adrenaline we use for emergency. It has a rapid onset, though it may have a brief duration of action due to rapid degradation. So, oral administration is ineffective. So, most of the time you give IM, IB, because when you give orally, it is inactivated by catecholamine or O methyl transferase. So, you do not get an effect, maybe brief actions. So, Though it is rapid, but it has a brief action. Now, look at the metabolite that are excreted in urine, like metanephrine, vinyl mandelic acid. These are actually used as a diagnostic marker. Like in pheochromocytoma, you collect the urine, you can look at this metabolite, and it will indirectly diagnose that person is having pheochromocytoma. Earlier, used to use this urine collection, put it into the rat blood pressure measurement. You can see the increase of blood pressure once you give this urine in different dilution. But nowadays, we have a really sophisticated method. You can easily diagnose pheochromocytoma. Typically, adrenaline use because adrenaline is a physiological antagonist to histamine. So, you have a case of anaphylactic shock, it can be given intramuscular 1 in 10,000, 1000 or 
it is given subcutaneously 1 in 1000 or intravenously 1 in 10,000. It is a life saving drug, emergency drug, you should know how to dilute intramuscular 1 in 1000 or subcutaneously 1 in 1000 and intravenously 1 in 10,000 and it is also react to light one has to be taking care of that it is react to light. So, you have to be prepared in separately. Now, in case of a bronchospasm, if you give this drug, it is causes bronchodilatation or in cardiac arrest, it restores the cardiac rhythm. So, all these condition what we discuss start from anaphylactic shock or severe bronchospasm or cardiac arrest, these are all emergency situation. You need a drug which act immediately, rapidly and patient will get benefit. So, this is what we have to remember, it's particularly I will say that you must practice that how do you dilute adrenaline ampules in 1 in 1000 to give intramuscular or giving subcutaneously or intravenously 1 in 10,000 you must practice so that you can be successful in emergency situation. Now, this drug since is has a vasoconstrictor property because of alpha 1 action, it is widely used in local anesthetic drug, widely used because it prolongs the local anesthetic action as well as local anesthetic like lignocan, bupivacan, it will have further systemic toxicity in order to prevent that you use local anesthetic. But one has to be careful when you use this drug, it should not be used in any N arteries like fingers because it might cause gangrene. Now, this drug also topically it is a homeostatic. Like suppose there is a bleeding is occurs and it is need not been controlled, it can be used because it has a potent vasoconstrictor property. So, any bleeding from the wound or peptic ulcer during endoscopy, it has been used as a homeostatic. Now, look at the adverse effect profile. It has a rapid action. Typically, you get restlessness or throbbing headache or tremor or palpitation, but sometimes it may be severe that cerebral hemorrhage because of increased sudden increase of BP. One has to be careful while giving or if you give overdose, it might cause cardiac arrhythmia. So, it should be judiciously used, carefully monitors, monitoring for any of this you know side effect which is tolerable at the same time you have to be careful about serious side effect. Now, typically we call it norepinephrine. Major use of norepinephrine it is it is a neurotransmitter. It is liberated from mammalian postganglionic sympathetic nerve. When you look at epinephrine or norepinephrine or adrenaline, noradrenaline, it is norepinephrine, it is different from epinephrine, it has lack of methyl substitution in amine group. But typically it act on very potent alpha 1 stimulatory reaction, alpha 2 stimulatory reaction or it has a beta 1 actions, but it has less beta 2 action or no beta 2 action. So, you remember it has action on alpha and beta, particularly beta 1, alpha 1 and alpha 2, but there is no action on beta 2 action. So, you cannot prefer in case of a respiratory tract. Now, looking at this action on alpha 1, alpha 2 and beta 1, you can see that moment you give norepinephrine, it has been widely used in order to raise the systolic blood pressure because it has potent beta 1 action and it also raise diastolic action because it causes vasoconstriction because of alpha 1 properties, stimulatory properties. And since there is no beta 2 action, there will be no vasodilatation. So, both systolic and diastolic blood pressure is raised. So, it has a positive heart rate effect like direct action that it has a chronotropic effect. 
or it also stimulates baroreceptor reflex. It is compensatory like baroreceptor reflex. It mechanism tend to overcome that direct or chronotomic effect. Net effect if you see it maintain the cardiac rhythm. So, it has positive cardiovascular action. Now, what happen in other effect? Like for example, this drug causes may cause hyperglycemia because you have seen effect of adrenaline on metabolic action through various receptors. Similarly, it is also act as a effect on metabolic as well effect and it is been easily seen once you give higher dose. Look at pharmacokinetically, it is it cannot give in orally because it is inactive, it degraded or it is absorbed very poorly from even if you give subcutaneously and it is rapidly inactivated by enzyme like CUMT or MAO inhibitors. Now, therapeutically you use this drug particularly for cardiovascular shock. You have seen typically favorable effect on beta 1 and beta 2 receptors. I said there is no effect on beta 2 receptors, but it has alpha 1 and alpha 2. So, it is been considered for cardiogenic shock and it is also used in order to raise support of blood pressure in case of ICU, intensive care unit. But one has to be careful that if you give excessive dose, it might cause severe hypertension. So, it is not suitable, you should not give subcutaneously or intramuscularly or diluted in IV injection because in while giving intravenously also one has to be very careful that it has typical problem that it causes necrosis of the skin. So, there is a site of reaction when giving intravenously also one has to be very careful while giving noradrenaline. Now, another drug which is exogenous is we call it isoprotonolol or many times we use call isoprenoline. This is a typical, this drug has typically action on selective beta 1 receptors. So, it has more affinity to beta 1 receptor also it also have a agonistic effect on beta 2 receptors, but it has minimal action on alpha 1 action. So, typically if you give this isoprenaline, it raise the blood pressure, systolic blood pressure because of beta 1 action or diastolic blood pressure because of beta 2 action. So, the cardiac output is increased due to positive ionotropic chronotropic effect and it is therapeutically used for this purpose only. Now, look at the other effect, it relaxes all varieties of smooth muscles, especially in bronchial and GI smooth muscle. So, it is also prevent bronchoconstriction and it inhibit antigen induced release of histamine and other mediator of inflammation, which is shared by beta receptor selective stimulus. Kinetic, kinetically, if you look at absorption where it is given parenterally. It is also sensitive to the light, one has to be careful keeping in that it should not react to the light and it is metabolized primarily in liver and tissue by CUMT. This is relatively poor substrate to MAO. So, it is only given parenterally, when it is given orally, it has been metabolized by CUMT and MAO. Now, what are the adverse effect or condition or you can call it contraindication you should not use isoprenaline. One of the problem, common problem is isoprenaline, it is potent beta 1 receptor affinity. So, the patient complain of palpitation, tachycardia, patient complain of headache and there is a flushing is occur. And because of potent beta 1 receptor activity, it causes 
cardiac ischemia and arrhythmia. But however, this drug is mostly used in case of emergency stimulating heart rate in patients suffering for particularly heart block. And it is used till external pacemaker is implanted. implanted. It is also used as a bronchodilator in management of irreversible airway obstruction. So, you can remember therapeutic use is typically used in case of heart block till the pacemaker is implanted or in case of problem with the respiratory tract where there is reversible airway obstruction. Now, coming to one of this drug is very commonly used is dopamine. Now, why dopamine is widely acceptable and suitable or most popular? Because it is an immediate metabolic precursor of norepinephrine and it is very important for regulation of the movement and it involved in reward stimulus for any of the addiction. So, deficiency of basal ganglia, you have a typical Parkinsonism like syndromes. So, dopamine when you discuss about pseudogenesis of as a neurotransmitter in CNS, it is linked to various diseases like Parkinsonism, addiction, drug abuse, potential, but it is also related to it is a precursor of norepinephrine. Now, how do dopamine is act is it act on dopamine 1 receptors and it has typically dose dependent effect. If you give a dose of 1 to 2 microgram per kg per minute, it act on dopamine 1 receptors. Now, if the dose is increased to 2 to 10 microgram per kg per minute, it act on beta 1 receptors. Now, if the dose is increased to more than 10 microgram per kg per minute, it act on alpha 1 receptors. So, as you say that depending on the dose, it affect on dopamine 1 receptors, beta 1 receptors or alpha 1 receptors if the dose is increased beyond 10 microgram per kg per minute. So, rate of flow is very, very important to get a therapeutic efficacy. Now, this drug has cardiovascular actions because you have seen that at low concentration, it act on vascular dopamine 1 receptors particularly in renal area or in a mesenteric area or coronary breaths, coronary vessels. So, particularly if you see that if you give 1 to 2 micro gram per kg body weight per minute, D1 receptor stimulation it lead to vasodilatation. But in case of a higher dose, it act on a beta 1 receptors, more higher dose, more than 10 act on a alpha 1 receptors. So, beta 1 action is positive inotropic effect in myocardium, but in higher dose alpha 1 receptor causes vasoconstriction. So, one need to be very careful how to select the dose duration, rate of flow in order to have maximum therapeutic efficacy. Now, this drug is selected in case of congestive heart failure, particularly with oliguria or you can also give in case of cardiogenic or septic shock, which is very severe in congestive heart failure. You can give the dose of 0.2 to 1 milligram per minute. As you know that it enhances the perfusion of the kidney or mesenteric and splanctic area, it enhances the glomerular filtration rate and it also causes sodium diuresis at the low dose when you use 0 0.5 to 2 microgram per kg per minute. So, it has a therapeutic efficacy particularly congestive heart failure with oliguria, cardiogenic shock or septic shock you have to give a particular dose of 0.2 to 1 milligram per minute. Now, what are the adverse effect or contraindication? Maybe there is common adverse effect like nausea and vomiting or tachycardia or patient may develop chest pain 
but severe one could be arrhythmia, headache, hypertension, but peripherally also you have to see that if the vasoconstriction is developed during the dopamine infusion, one has to be careful. So, in case of a large doses may cause excessive sympathomimetic stimulation or you have to look for is there any ischemic necrosis. So, all patients should be monitored and carefully monitor for any of the adverse effect. Another one is dobutamine, though it is like you say dopamine, dobutamine. It resembles dopamine and it has action R mediated through activation of alpha and beta receptor. Now, it has a direct selective beta 1 agonistic action and it has no dopaminergic action. It is only acting on beta 1 agonist. So, <coughs> it is available as a racemic mixture and clinically widely used. Look at some of the use like cardiovascular effect. It is more potent inotropic than chronotomic effect on heart compared to isoprotonolol. It has enhanced the automaticity, particularly if you see the SA node to lesser extent compared to isoprotonolol. It also increases the cardiac output, but doses not significantly increase with oxygen demand. So, dobutamine is typically you can use in CHF, congestive heart failure. Dobutamine is used as alternative to exercise in cardiac stressing. Stress testing when you send a patient, it can be used dobutamine in order to see the performance of heart. And this solution containing 1 milligram per ml given by infusion pump at the dose of 5 microgram per kg for 8 minutes. So, this is used in commonly practice. But when you look at adverse effect profile and contraindication, as it is stimulatory, BP is increased, heart rate is increased and so we have to adjust the infusion rate. And this dobutamine should not be used in a caution patient reported with atrial fibrillation because it always enhance in case AB conduction. So, it is an inotropic agent. So, dobutamine is potentially may be increase the size of myocardial infarction by increasing myocardial oxygen demand. So, in case of pre ischemia, it should not be used because it will prone to have more ischemic or infarction in patient with ischemia. Another drug Phenol dopam, it is typically a dopamine 1 receptor agonist. And what it does is basically it does a peripheral vasodilatation. It has an oral viability, though it is very poor. So, most of the time you give in IV road intravenously. It is rapidly acting vasodilator. And since it is rapidly acting, it is given in very severe hypertension in hospitalized patient, particularly patient with renal impairment. And it is also reported with common side effect like headache. People have a flushing because if there is a vasodilation, then you have a flushing or dizziness, nausea, vomiting, trachecardia, it might observe. Now, let us take a second topic is one is catecholamine, second is non-catecholamine sympathomimetic agent. You have seen that effect of pharmacological effect of catecholamine. Now, what happened in non-catecholamine sympathomimetic agent? Now, moment you say non-catecholamine, these are substances which do not have catecholamine, means dihydroxybenzene, but still it is activate directly or indirectly acting on alpha and beta receptor. And benefit of this, this earlier agent, most of the agent 
you cannot give orally because either it is inactivated by CUMT or MAO. But this as an non-catecholamine can be given orally and it is effective orally and it has a long duration of action also. Now, if you see directly acting sympathomimetic, it act directly one and more to adrenergic receptors. And it may exhibit considerably selective specific receptor subtype like alpha 1, for example, tarbutalin, it act on beta 2 receptors. Alpha 1 is phenylephrine. It may act on several receptors like epinephrine, alpha 1 receptors, alpha 2 receptors or beta 1 and beta 2 receptors. And their response are not reduced prior to the treatment of reserpine or any other drug you give guanatidine. Another form of drug which is acting indirectly acting sympathomimetic. This drug increase availability of norepinephrine and epinephrine and it stimulate adrenaline receptors and how it stimulate adrenaline receptors? It release or displacing norepinephrine. So, on repeated dose it is another problem is cause tachyphylaxis. You give a dose, increase the dose, you get the same response. So, that is what the problem is increasing the dose, you will not get the increasing response. And it also inhibit the reuptake of epinephrine. One of the example that if you give cocaine, by blocking metabolizing enzyme like MAO and CUMT or it also responds indirectly acting abolish prior to the treatment of preserpine and guanatidine. Or there could be mixed action of sympathomimetic. And these are the drug is released like noradrenaline or indirectly drug acting through directly acting on the receptors. And this effect but not abolish prior to the treatment of preserpine and guanatidine. Now, let us classify one is alpha 1 selective adrenergic receptor agonist. You have number of example like methoxamine, phenylephrine, metaraminol, midudrin, mephentaramine. Then another group of drug is acting on alpha 2 selective adrenergic receptor agonist like clonidine, typically used in various conditions like hypertension or other than hypertension also use epraclonidine, brimodine, guanefacin, guanibens, tizanidine, monoxy, mono, monoxinidine. So, there are various example of alpha 1 agonist and alpha 2 agonist. Now, look at the drug acting on short acting beta 2 adrenergic agonist. Now, what are the drug of short acting beta 2 agonist, adrenergic agonist? <coughs> One is metaproterenol, albuterol, levabuterol, pirbuterol, commonly used drug like tarbutalin, phenoterol, or proscaterol. We have a class of drug with long acting beta 2 agonist, adrenergic agonist, like salmeterol. Pemoterol, Arpomoterol, or you have a very long beta 2 agonist, it is Edacaterol, Aldoderterol, Bilnaterol, or beta 2 agonist selective like Retrodin or Isosuprine. So, there are various agonists on alpha 1, alpha 2, or beta 2 with short long and very long action. So, directly acting as in like phenylephrine, it is basically alpha 1 selective agonist. So, since uh, it act on alpha 1 receptor, it is a very potent vasoconstrictor. So, it is used as a effective decongestant or 
it can be used in ophthalmic condition like my detection. Second is midodrine alpha 1 receptor agonism. Basically, it is a prodrug and which is converted to active metabolite is desgliomidodrine and you get an effect of because of this metabolite. T half is almost 3 hours, it is used in the treatment of orthostatic hypotension. This orthostatic hypotension typically occur in elderly. When they sit, moment they stand up, they have a hypotension, they feel giddiness, some people they have a fall history. Or may cause supine hypertension, it can be minimized. And this is given by administration of the drug during the period when patient remain upright or avoid dosing during the bedtime. So, this is one of the example of postural hypertension we use midadroin. Now, in case of oxymetazoline, what condition you use oxymetazoline? Basically, it is a alpha 1 agonist. So, it is a partial alpha 2 agonist at the large dose and it might cause hypotension. Now, it is used as a topical decongestant in a cold, common cold, you want to clear the nose, you have a nozzle drop of oxymetazole. So, use for prolonged period causes rhinitis and some other agent is also used like nephazoline, xylometazoline. So, these are common example in case of a common cold, use clearing the nose. Now, clonidin is alpha 2 agonist action. It lowered the BP. If you give clomidine, it act on presynaptic receptors. Presynaptic receptor is alpha 2 receptors. So, it inhibit, it stimulate the alpha 2 receptor, it is an agonistic action and because of agonistic action, there is decreased release of noradrenaline from the presynaptic receptor and that is how it act as a hypotensive. So, it suppresses the sympathetic outflow to the brain. So, it is given IV infusion of chlorine causes transient vasoconstriction due to activation of postsynaptic alpha 2 receptors and which is followed by hypotensive response. So, it also stimulates parasympathetic outflow to the heart rate. This drug is well absorbed when it is given orally also, by availability is almost 100 percent. And other than this also, there are so many preparation available like transdermal patch is used and it can be also used in treatment of withdrawal symptoms due to alcohol addiction or abuse potential in diarrhea. Of course, it has side effect like dry mouth, people also refer to sedation, bradycardia or you have to remember that after giving clonidine, suddenly if you stop, there is always possibility of rebound hypertension. If the clonidine stop suddenly, one has to be very, very careful. So, this point you need to be noted. Second thing is other alpha 2 agonists like apraclonidine. Apraclonidine is used in ocular conditions like in order to reduce intraocular pressure. Though it does not cross blood brain barrier, another drug is brimodine, it is also used in lower the intraocular pressure. But it can cross blood brain barrier and produce hypotension or sedation. So, when you study it, you give into the eye how much its systemic absorption is there. If it is there, then there is chances it can cross blood brain barrier or it can cause hypotension and sedation. One more drug, guanapicin. Guanapicin is basically a alpha 2 receptor agonist and it is more selective to clonidine. As you have seen, clonidine has typically action as an agonistic effect on presynaptic receptor, alpha 2 receptor. Guanapicin has sustained form USFD has approved particularly for ADHD, attention deficit 
hyper activity disorder. And this has a long half life 12 to 24 hours. Now, another drug we use is methyl dopa. This methyl dopa it is metabolized to alpha methyl norepinephrine into the brain and it has a compound lower BP manner similar to clonidine. And you have a half life, this methyl dopa has a half life of 2 hours and it is also considered as one of the essential medicine in essential drug list. Now, another example we have methoxidine. Methoxidine it causes drug reduced BP, but it has a analgesic properties also. Then another is dexmethomidine. It is used in intensive care unit and particularly it is used for moderate sedation. Some of the studies suggested that it is causing less delirium compared to any other sedative. So, this drug is used in veterinary conditions in dog and rat less used in human. Now, if you remember one of the drug is orciprinaline. Orciprinaline is have a hydroxy group 3 to 5 position and it is metabolized by COMT. It is potent beta 2 agonist, but it is less selective when you compare with tarbutaline and salbutamol. So, more prone to have cardiac stimulation. And this drug has onset is very slow when it is given orally compared to inhalational route, but it is used as a bronchodilator. Now, one of the very common use drug is salbutamol. Salbutamol is a beta 2 receptor agonist. If you look back and see history, it was discovered during 1966 in England. It is can be given orally as I say earlier or it is also preferred to use by inhalational route. And typically we use for symptomatic relief of bronchospasm. Now, when you give inhalational route, it produces significant bronchodilatation and you get an effect within 15 minutes and this effect passes for almost 3 to 4 hours. It is also used to reduce the high potassium level to delay the premature labor. Now, in 1972, this drug was included as banned drug in anti doping cases. So, the now athlete they have to give the therapeutic exemption for use of this drug since. 1972. Typically, when this drug is used, people complain of tremor, palpitation, dry mouth or hypokalemia. And this hypokalemia, you get it only in case of a higher dose. Another drug you use tarbutaline. Tarbutaline is beta 2 receptor agonist, used basically for bronchial as asthma, bronchodilator. Effect observed rapidly when it is given inhalational route or it is delayed when it is given orally. But this drug is also used in case of daily premature labor, but this indication is not approved by USFD. Another drug is Pantorol, short acting beta 2 receptor agonist. It is a stimulant to beta 1 receptors at particular therapeutic dose. So, in case of withdrawn, it is withdrawn from the market due to excessive number of death may occur due to excessive use of large dose during the acute asthmatic attack in responding to usual dose without any medication, medical attention. So, this has been withdrawn from the market. Another drug is pirubuterol, short acting beta 2 receptor agonist. It has if you look at chemically, it has pyridine ring instead of benzene ring. This drug only preparation available beneath the active, like it is in the form of inhalation, it is been given. 
Salbutamol sal metrol long acting beta 2 agonist bronchodilators. So, this is a beta 2 selective, it is 50 times more effective than salbutamol. However, this drug is not suitable for acute bronchial asthma, acute cases of asthmatic effect because this drug has a slow action. Now, patient also have moderate to severe persistent bronchial asthma, COPD benefit by use of this drug. This drug received a black box warning report because of fatal asthmatic attack in some patient. For material also beta 2 agonist, faster acting than any other salbutramol or r material also, it is an enzymer to formatrol, it is two times more potent than formatrol. Similarly, retrodin, it is basically beta 2 selective, it developed for uterine relaxation or mira big grown, typically it is a beta T receptor agonist and it is used in urinary incontinence. It is inhibitor to cytochrome 2 D 6 and most commonly side effect occurs. Now, coming to the mixed action of sympathomimetic, typically we have very old drug epinephrine, ephedrine. Now, what is this ephedrine? It occur in various plant. Like if you look back old history in China in 2000 years back, it was you introduced later in western literature in 1924, because initially it was found to be first orally active sympathomimetic agent. And it was used as herbal preparation medication. It is a gonist, both alpha and beta receptors and it release norepinephrine from sympathomimetic reaction. Longer duration of action, sympathetic heart rate, increased BP, bronchiolitis, nasal and it is also CNS stimulant. So, because of stimulatory property, people used to use for addiction. So, it has been banned in dietary supplement with epinephrine in the sports but it is preferred vasopressor in pregnancy. Then another we have a pseudoephedrine which is an enzymer to epidrine or phenyl propylamine which we use some of the abdices you use for decongestion. So, in phenyl propylamine also you can see the potency to same drug of epidrine or less CNS stimulation. Now, this phenyl propylamine it was used in US for treatment of obesity and it has been reported that it causes stroke and this dose was used a higher dose and in US it is banned use of phenyl propylamine because it causes hemorrhagic stroke. <laughs> now, indirectly acting sympathomimetic like most commonly used in clinical practice is amphetamine. Now, you should know that amphetamine is a banned drug, it can cause addiction, it is only used recommended in the treatment of ADHD or maybe clinician prefer that if you want to manage narcolepsy, it can be used. So, basically it is a CNS stimulant drug, it help in wakefulness, alertness or elevation of the mood or increase ability to concentrate and that is why it enhances the physical performance. So, it has been recommended for the treatment of ADHD or narcolepsy. It has typically cardiovascular <coughs> system effect, it raises both systolic and diastolic blood pressure, it can cause reflex bradycardia or arrhythmia in higher doses. It has effect on smooth muscle also, like st very strong bladder contraction, urinary bladder sphincters, is used in anorexis and incontinence. And it has an unpredictable side effect like GIs, muscle tones or increased urinary tone also. Effect on respiratory system, it stimulates the respiratory centers or it is effect on appetite also. Now, some of the adverse effect you remember that it might cause a headache, palpitation, agitation, 
confusion, tremor, typical CNS symptoms including arrhythmia and nausea and vomiting. So, in toxic doses amphetamine which is very rare and if it is beyond 15 milligram it can cause. So, treatment of amphetamine intoxication it include acidification of the urine or administration of ammonium chloride it can be treated. Now, another group in the similar conditions like mephenteramine or methylphenytoin these all are similar stimulant. Now, another group of drug is modophil. This modophil is preferred in management of narcolepsy. So, basically it increases the synaptic concentration of norepinephrine and dopamine. This drug is also banned in sports since 2004. Another group of drug is primolin. It is used to be used in ADHD, but it was discontinued as it causes severe hepatic failure. Tyramine it is a product of tyrosine metabolism. It is inactive when it is given orally because it is metabolized by mao. So, patient with mao inhibitors tyramine intensify leading to increased BP. Cocaine it is not used, it is a ban. It was used to be used as a local anesthetic, but it is now it is not used because of addiction or abuse potential. So, as I said initially in the beginning, ANS autonomic nervous system, under this we have a sympathetic mimetic and parasympathetic mimetics. Now, when you look at adrenaline like effect or sympathetic mimetics, we have typically a catecholamine, endogenous group of drug or exogenous group of drug, but we have another one sympathetic mimetic which we can prefer to give orally. It has a longer duration of occur or you can have a similar ADR profile. So, if you have any questions, please refer. Thank you very much.